Hi, I'm Stephanie Murray at the Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State University, and this is the 2022 State of Collaboration. So our center is one of the only organizations in the world that studies for and advocates for collaboration amongst journalists. Although our area of study was initially focused when we started about six years ago on the United States, we've tried to expand more internationally recently. Every year we do a scan of the industry and try to pull out some of the most interesting trends, um, important trends that we see across the world. So here's our look at the 2022 State of Collaboration. There are five major trends that we see, and the first is about money. Journalistic collaboratives are becoming much more sophisticated, diverse, and common. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that. They've also evolved, though, beyond editorial-only partnerships and onto revenue-side collaborations. Several collaboratives in the United States, including Solving for Chicago, the Oklahoma Media Center, and the Chicago Independent Media Alliance, have shared revenue components. They're specifically working together to see how they can raise money, how they can make money together as a group that benefits every individual organization. In an article by the LenFest Institute of Journalism, Glenn Birkins, who's a 40-year veteran journalist and publisher of QCityMetro.com in North Carolina, said he was very skeptical when he first heard of the idea of collaborative fundraising, but now he's on his third project. These kind of revenue collaborations are a model for the future, and they could be one path forward for news organizations that want to do ambitious journalism but don't have the resources to support that work. And I think we'll see more research coming out soon about how revenue side collaborations are working. So trend number two is one we've talked about in previous state of collaborations, and that's the increase in cross-border work. Cross-border collaborations are thriving all around the world, from Europe to Africa, from South America to Asia. Latin America is also bustling with high quality journalism collaboratives across the entire region. Over the last few years, veteran journalists, Marina Guevara Walker, Maria Teresa Ronderos, and Giannina Signini have taken steps to expand this kind of work. One result is the Centro Latinoamericano de Investigación Periodística, also known as CLIP, which conducts and coordinates cross-border collaborative investigations in Central and South America. Based in Costa Rica, CLIP's work is focused on unraveling abuses of power and making them more visible to residents and communities in the region. The third trend that we're seeing is cross-field collaboration. So cross-field collaboration is when a journalism organization works with a civil society organization to produce content and an explicit shared ideal or outcome. Cross-border collaborations have been recognized more and more in recent years. According to a new report by the center's research director, Sarah Stambouli and Hannah Shimashko, cross-field collaborations have become more frequent as newsrooms have become increasingly impatient with the lack of impact from their investigative projects that frustration has led journalists to become more willing to partner with civil society organizations, many of whose reason for being is making change. With the drive for impact comes complicated ethical questions, however, that journalists are wrestling with, but many have found ways to negotiate. So in one example from that report is the Azerbaijani laundromat investigation, where journalists from the Danish newspaper Berlingsk the Guardian, Le Monde, Novaya Gazeta, and others worked in collaboration with the global advocacy group Transparency International to uncover a $2.9 billion slush fund being used to bribe politicians and purchase expensive items. So once that reporting was published, Transparency International stepped up its push for accountability by coordinating a letter writing campaign aimed at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, demanding investigations of the people involved in that money laundering scheme in multiple countries. So trend number four is focus on the United States and threats to democracy here. One example of this is Democracy SOS, 
Right now, they're working with nearly two dozen news organizations to transform political coverage to better serve democracy in the United States. Democracy Day is another example, which is a nationwide collaborative reporting project, an effort to draw attention to the crisis facing the United States, provide the public with the context and information they need about how to participate in democracy, how it works, and bring all types of media together to sound the collective alarm. Democracy Day will take place September 15th, which is also the International Day of Democracy. Meanwhile, the Solutions Journalism Network recently launched its Advancing Democracy Project with eight reporting projects in 10 newsrooms across the U.S. In that case, each newsroom will consider local problems related to the democratic process, as well as the way those problems are being addressed or solved. Zooming in from a national to a state level, we have trend number five, where we're seeing more statewide news collaboratives pop up. There are so many strong statewide newsrooms, in fact, in this country, that recently a new collaborative was formed just to connect them all. So this was started by RevLab at the Texas Tribune, LenFest, um, Institute for Journalism, and Spotlight PA. They announced it last month. It's a new community of news organizations that serve statewide audiences. It was created to support the existing statewide publishers and support a growing number of new ones that we know are coming down the pipeline to provide mentorship, peer support, and the exchange of information on news coverage. They're gonna share some content distribution, revenue creation, like we talked about in trend number one, product development, and more. Looking specifically at Delaware, there's a new initiative there between the Local News Initiative and Solutions Journalism Network. They've been working with more than two dozen news organizations across Delaware to launch the Delaware Journalism Collaborative, and they're currently looking to hire their first project manager. And in New Jersey, where our center is based, a dozen news organizations are currently working together on a statewide news translation collaborative to make sure statewide news about our state can be read in both English and Spanish. To wrap up, as Caroline Porter and Elizabeth Hansen Shapiro said in their new research looking at solutions journalism collaboratives, the true flowering of a collaborative happens when the group engages on a deeper level when it starts to see positive funding and policy change. And finally, when it grows its commitment to engage with its community or audience. Ultimately, Hanson Shapiro says, the story of collaborative journalism is about building new connections at an ecosystem level. That changes things. We could not agree more. That's the state of collaboration for 2022. We know we missed some items. Um, we only pulled out five trends, there could be more. Um, if your project was not noted and you think it should be, or if your project is not in our database and you think it should be, please let us know. You can check out our database at collaborativejournalism.org slash database, or you can always email us at info at centerforcooperativemedia.org. We would love to make sure you're included, put you on our website and keep in touch. Thanks for watching. Give me like a really, and that's it. Uh, I guess we'll see you all at the next collaborative journey. I gotta get my kid from daycare. I'm a half hour late. Go, 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 go. Yeah.